Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, this is how to make an RPG in Unity and welcome to episode 21. So this time we're going to fix off that little bug we found out from the last episode with the minimap and we're going to look at some player prefs as well as getting our NPCs walking around. So I'm going to bring in another NPC and I found one which I quite like so I'm going to use that one. So first and foremost, let's start with sorting out that minimap. So what we need to do is on the original object that we have here on the notice trigger, if we go into quest 0018, we have to declare another variable, which will be that minimap itself. So let's add that in. Public game object uh, minimap semicolon. And as soon as we press the action button and the distance is under or equal to three, then we need to turn off that minimap because that's when we have that second screen active. So to do that, we just do minimap.set active false and save that script. Then obviously we have to declare that minimap within the canvas. Uh, so let's find it. It's that right there. And then obviously when we get the buttons back on, which are in, um, I believe, somewhere here, is it? Reward panel. So accept and decline. So it would be this quest button object here. So quest button manager contains both the scripts. So quest 001 buttons. Whichever way we do it here, whether we accept or decline, we still need to set the minimap as active. So we need to declare it again here. Game object mini map and as soon as we have accepted it let's put that minimap back on mini map dot set active true semicolon and the same line also needs to be applied to the decline bit there save and then let's quickly sort that variable out there we go mini map onto there let's press play <clears throat> check this works just fine so mini maps on Take the quest, let's accept, and there we go. Minimap is back on, perfect. So now let's take a look at getting an NPC walking around at random through the village. So I have been to the asset store and I found a cool little asset, which I uh, believe is called Necromancer. Uh, it is free, of course. So if we type that in, click free, and I'm going to use this one. There's quite a few good assets from this uh, creator here. This one has plenty of animations, so we could probably use it as more than just an NPC. Because I'm kind of going for a whole fantasy thing now, I kind of like how this looks. Um, the asset itself is very, very useful. So import, download, whatever you need to do. Uh, close that. And I've already gone ahead and brought it in. Now, one of the reasons I particularly like this asset is it requires very little work to get working in the game because it's so well done. So if we drag and drop this NPC character into our game, we'll notice that it already has that animation and all the animations attached to it. I love this because it takes less development time for me to work all this in. So its default animation currently is all, but we want to change that to walk. So if we click on element six, we'll see it highlights here. So just drag and drop that into animation all. I'm gonna decrease the scale of him because he's a little bit big and change it to 0.5 by 0.5 by 0.5. Obviously you can have it whatever size you need it to be. So the idea of what we're gonna do here is we're gonna create a point of where he can walk to within a certain range. So he walks to it and that point changes probably every five or six seconds. And obviously this is a little bit of AI, but in the next couple of episodes, we're gonna delve even more into AI and it is really cool, believe me. So first thing we need to do is let's create a point of where we want our character to be able to walk around in. So I would like him to be able to walk around in anywhere from let's say here all the way to here and here to here so within this area here so let's keep that in mind as we create this script so in our scripts folder in ai scripts let's right click create 
and C sharp script, and we'll have this as necro walk AI. So within this script, we're not going to require too many variables to be honest. It's a fairly simple script and it'll work quite nicely. Uh, let's start by getting rid of the note at the top. We don't need that. Public int, and we need to generate an X position and a Z position. So he'll walk to whatever position that is. So X pause semicolon and public int Z pause semicolon. And finally, we just need an object that he can use its transform variable of to walk towards. So public game object, and we'll do NPC dest, short for destination. So what's going to happen here is when the script starts, we want to generate those two coordinates. So x pos equals random dot range. And in brackets, this is where we need to set what we need. So if we go back to Unity, game object, 3D object, and a cube. Let's bring this cube down to the ground. In fact, let's set it as zero on the Y. So I want him to be able to walk from, let's say about here. So if we say 74, all the way over here, to let's say 104. So minimum would be 74, maximum would be 105. And I think we've dealt with random ranges before in this series. We always have to go one above just because Unity can be a little bit silly at times. That's the quick and simple explanation. So then we need to generate the Z position and that's the same principle, random dot range. And then let's define the random range for here. So we've got here, 67 and let's have him about there 85 so 67 and 86 close bracket semicolon and once we've generated those two coordinates let's set this npc destination object at those coordinates npc dest dot transform dot position equals new vector three and in brackets we put those coordinates x pos and we'll put the y as zero so as he stays grounded and z pos and finally we need to start a coroutine to run that again so we'll do start coroutine if i can spell it right and we'll just call it run random walk run random walk close bracket semicolon next thing we need to do is let's get rid of that note over update we don't need it so we want the npc to look at where he's walking so we can do transform dot look at that's capital l capital a much like we did with the uh, pointer arrow a couple of episodes ago and we need to put in brackets npc dest dot transform so we'll always be looking at the transform coordinates of npc destination then we need to make him move towards it so in similar sort of styles we did with the spider a while ago we can use the move towards function in vector 3 so transform dot position equals vector 3 dot move towards and in brackets, we can put transform.position, comma, npc dest.transform.position. And now we need to declare the speed of how quickly he'll do it. Now, usually I do set this as a variable up here uh, to make things quicker. I have already kind of gone ahead planned all this out and I know a decent speed for him to go at is 0.02f. Obviously you can add that in as a variable. All you would do is set your variable speed somewhere and uh, declare it as a variable up at the top. So next thing we need to do that I enumerator because we've declared a start coroutine here. So let's go down a little bit. So I enumerator and it's called 
run random walk. Oh, close bracket. Open curly bracket. And uh, let me see. I did spell that right, didn't I? Yeah, I did. That's fine. So in here, all we need to do is yield return new wait for seconds and in brackets however long you want before you regenerate where the NPC will walk to. So I'm going to say five seconds to make things a bit quick and we can kind of cheat a little bit here because we can copy the entire start method, paste it in run random walk and save. Now I've noticed this is kind of highlighting red. I hope this doesn't give an error. It has. So let's see. What doesn't it like? I think I may have. Uh, yeah, that's what it is. I've missed off the parentheses there and there. So it should be uh, open bracket, your name of your method, open close bracket and close bracket again. And that should sort it. Now, that's the beauty of when we're coding, because it'll tell us if something doesn't seem right, i.e. it indicated it, underlining it red. So head back to Unity, and we should be able to see that. Perfect. No errors. So this cube here, let's right click and rename, and let's call it uh, Necro NPC Dest. I'm going to turn off Mesh Renderer and Box Collider for now. The Box Collider may come in useful later on when we kind of see if we've got any bugs going on. So let's get this all working correctly. Let's add Necro Walk to our Necromancer. Script is on there. And we just need to set that destination onto there. And hopefully, if we press play, we should see off he goes. So he's walking over that way because obviously his destination has been set there and every five seconds it'll change. There we go, it's changed again so he's walking over that way. Now this is a nice simple way for uh, NPCs to kind of walk around without the use of um, nav mesh. And nav mesh is something that we're going to get into at a later date, probably um, not next episode, maybe the episode after, because that comes in very useful. It kind of sets an area where they can walk. So he's infinitely going to walk around now for as long as he wants, and we can get more detailed on that at a later date. For example, when he stops, we can play his idle animation, but that's something we'll deal with later on. What I want to get onto now is our original NPC that we brought in that gives us our second quest, because this is where it's going to get interesting because once we've picked up our sword i want this person to be able to give us the next quest so there's one little thing we're going to do to this before we end this tutorial and if we go to our um oh gosh where is it text box there we are if you remember we have this npc face right here and it currently displays as white so at the moment we need to kind of fill that. And we're going to use the same sort of method we used for the um, minimap. So if we go to our textures, create a new render texture, we'll have this as NPC001 face. And then hopefully you guys may be a little bit ahead of me, but if we right click on our samurai, or rather the NPC object, and go to camera, and position the camera so as it's looking at our NPC face. So I'm going to turn it around, 180. And I'd like it about there, I think. And I'm going to use that camera and rename it and have NPC uh, underscore cam Luke. And then drag and drop that render texture onto there. And then our text box, which is, I've lost it again, NPC face. We're going to then drag that texture onto there and save. Now there's cool and different ways of doing this. I think this just adds a little bit more to an RPG game because I've seen it in RPG games myself. Uh, we'll probably work on it a little bit more as we go more and more into development, but let's see how this looks now. So. Let's speak. There we go. 
and you can see that's how it's working in a text box. So next episode, we're going to allow that person to uh, give us the next quest. But in doing so, we're going to need to use something called player press because it's getting to a point now where we kind of um, need to maybe start saving. So let's create a script which will allow us to save a player pref. And a player pref is, for example, an integer. So I'm going to create a new folder and I'll call it saving. And in here, I'm going to right click, create and C sharp script. And let's have this as save gold. So in here, all we're going to do is on void start, let's use uh, player preps dot set int and make sure you don't get too confused with set and get because get is where we receive, set is where we place. So set int and then in brackets and quotes, we need to set the name of this player prep, which we can call at a later date. And let's call it gold amount save and then comma and then we need to set a value in that save so if we go to for example the scripts and if we go into global cache we can reference this gold amount so in here we can put global cache dot gold amount close bracket semicolon and save now it won't make too much of a difference at this very moment but it will do as we get further in now i wanted to touch on player prefs uh, right now because a lot of people have been asking at this point how do we save the game and it is going to be done via player prefs so i thought i would just give a little bit of an insight to player prefs before the end of this tutorial and see how far you guys can go with it to see what you can develop so next episode what we're going to do is we'll look at the opposite side of player prefs so um getting the value from it we're going to build up this village we're going to bring in a new boss and we'll get this quest going once and for all so guys until that next episode thank you very much for watching